Slicers have come a long way from taking an STL file and converting it into G-code to be printed. Don't get me wrong, they still very much do this with more options than ever, but between design elements, project management, and material calibration, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Earlier this year, we took a look at Prusa Slicer 2.6, which was such a massive release it warranted a top 10 features list. I've been following the progress of the latest 2.7 this past month, and the final version has officially launched. With it comes some great additions for designing and performance that I'm really hoping to see expanded on. In this video, we'll be diving into Prusa Slicer 2.7. We'll go over some of these new features, how they work, and see them in action. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. In the Prusa Slicer 2.6 video, we looked at the text tool, which allows you to quickly add text to any model from within the slicer. This is super handy for model customization and can be a pain to do in traditional CAD software. With 2.7, this customizability is taken a step further with the SVG embossing tool. From quickly slapping a logo onto a model to creating completely unique designs, this is a very powerful feature. To use this tool, right click on the model you want to add a vector to. Then, under Add Part, select SVG. This opens a file explorer window where you first need to locate your vector and click Open to import. This will open the SVG file in Prusa Slicer along with the tool menu. At the very top of that menu, a preview of the file is displayed. Underneath that, you can reload the file if you made a change to the original SVG, choose a different file, forget file path, bake the vector into the 3D model, which makes it no longer editable, and export the vector file. For controlling the 3D model generated from the vector file, you can adjust depth, size of the design, whether you want it to wrap around the surface of the model, rotation, and mirror both vertically and horizontally. There's also a face the camera button, which lets you position the design on your model from any perspective, giving you additional control. Just like with the text tool, there are three different operations that can be used with the SVG files. Join treats your vector as its own 3D object that is combined with the 3D model that you added it to. Cut subtracts any intersecting portions of your vector file from your model, and the last option is to set the vector as a modifier. Modifiers in Prusa Slicer let you give that portion of your model custom parameters that differ from the rest of it. These can be used both for visual and structural changes. I'll have links in the description over to the Prusa Slicer modifier documentation for anyone interested. Based on Arc Welder Lib by former Lurker, Prusa Slicer 2.7 brings G2 and G3 support to the slicer. These commands are for circles or arcs, and depending on the geometries of the parts you're slicing, can greatly reduce file sizes. G0 and G1 are used for linear moves, which is fine for straight lines, but each circle or arc requires a sequence of G1 commands that can quickly add up. For an example, I took a bullet bill model and sliced it with the new arc fitting setting off. I then enabled it and resliced the model. To activate this new feature, go to the print settings, advanced, and under the slicing section, select enabled from the arc fitting drop down menu. Comparing results, the file with arc fitting off was 17.3 megabytes, while the file with arc fitting enabled was 11.5. This is a 40% reduction in file size. Again, the difference will vary depending on what you're slicing, but it does show that it has the potential to greatly reduce file sizes. Taking file size even a step further, we have the introduction of binary G-code. With Prusa Slicer 2.7, the team has released a new standard for compressing ASCII G-code files, which we are used to seeing, into binary G-code. The specifications for this, along with a library for converting ASCII G-code to binary and binary to ASCII, is available in the Prusa GitHub. To enable this in the slicer, click on Print Settings, Output Options, and click the checkbox next to Export as Binary G-code. Using the exact same bullet bill model with both arc fitting and binary G code enabled, I reslice the file. This brought us down from 11.5 megabytes to 4.9 for an 80% reduction. Currently, this is only available for the Prusa Mini, Mark IV, and Excel printers running at least firmware version 5.1.0. I'm really hoping that we see this ported over to Clipper, Marlin, and RepRap firmware. As printers get bigger and we add things like multicolor or tool changing, finding a way to minimize file size across the board is a win. If you've ever used Clipper or RepRap firmware, you're likely familiar with G-Code macros. Prusa Slicer has also supported creating macros for conditions directly in the custom G-Code section of the slicer for some time now. 
With 2.7, there's now a custom G-code dialog window for creating and editing these macros. Under any of the headers within custom G-code, clicking the edit icon will open this window. Here you'll find a list of all placeholders available that can be added by double clicking or selecting the placeholder and clicking the plus button. A short description of each also displays at the bottom left of this window. Last but not least, cancel object for Marlin, RepRap firmware, and Clipper is now compatible with Prusa Slicer. Labeling objects has been available for a while and we actually covered the cancel object Octoprint plugin using this almost two years ago. However, cancel object is implemented differently depending on the firmware and with this update, all major firmwares are covered. To use this, under print settings, output options, and label objects, there is now a drop-down menu. The default is Octoprint comments, but you can also choose disable or firmware specific now. Unless you're using Octoprint's cancel object, you want firmware specific. This sets the correct output based on the firmware you've selected under printer settings. If you're not using cancel object, I highly recommend it. It's one of those features that you might not need to use often, but when you're running a batch of parts and you happen to have one of them fail or lift off, being able to just remove that part from your build plate and have the rest of them complete successfully is really nice. And that has been Prusa Slicer 2.7. There are a handful of other tweaks and optimizations, but those are definitely the standouts. For anyone wanting to check out the release notes or download the slicer, I'll have links available in the description below. If you have any cool ideas for how to use the new SVG tool in Prusa Slicer, let us know in the comments down below. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Deanna from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.